um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, both Ruben and uh, Béranger warmly for inviting me to present a paper in this workshop. Um, certainly the, the demise of the Kuroraxis phenomenon is a perplexing question that has been that has confused scholars for many decades. For one part, this confusion is due to methodological problems, and people are certainly right in saying that we must work on Kuroraxis and post Kuroraxis assemblages in more detail, as I heard many of you say yesterday and today. It's also clear that we must revise many of our assumptions, in particular as concerns chronologies and typologies. At the same time as we do that, and it's certainly very important that we do so, I think we should also tackle the issue of Kuroraxis demise from a wider angle in order to understand in which context, both historical and environmental, the demise of the Kuroraxis complex actually unfolded. This is what I will try to do today. Frankly, I will not be able to delve very deeply into the available data in this talk, simply because I have no time to do so. My purpose is only to suggest a few analytical paths. So if we consider the Kuraxis complex as a whole in its wider context, we may first note that this complex, whose hallmark is mainly a black burnished pottery repertoire, extends at its peak over a very wide, mostly mountainous area that ranges from the Caspian Sea to the Mediterranean Sea. This area covers a range of very different landscapes, as well as it borders a vast region mainly characterized by lowlands and mostly people by light crafting groups. In a few regions during certain periods, lightware and lightware crafting peoples were clearly engaged into multiple interactions. And these interactions are best illustrated by the royal tomb at Aslan Tepe. But this is clearly not the general case. My first step at trying to modelize the demise of the Kuroraxis complex was to delineate Kuroraxis and Kuroraxis related units by region. In doing so, I have relied on broad ceramic stylistic trends, but more importantly, on the dating of the last Kuroraxis settlements as indicated by the excavators in each region. This is how I ended up mapping eight different groups that you may see on this map. This is clearly a tentative map since all known groups have not been reported on this map. I have only reported groups for which I had enough information. And also clearly I could have gone into more detail and create more groups, especially as far as the Kuroraxis unit is concerned. Moreover, it should be noted that the data with which this map has been created rest on, very, uh, on data of very uneven quality. Many of the units I have delineated are illustrated by just two or three excavations. This is the case of the Velikent unit, the East Van West Urmia unit, or the Eastern Urma, uh, the um, Western Ur Ur mm, sorry, Eastern Urma and the Amuk units. Several other groups are only documented through surveys. And this is the case of the Elbistan group, but of course I could have also added the Western Van group or the Tunjili group. And most of the excavations whose data I have used to create this map, and most of these excavations are only published through very preliminary reports. This is the case in the Erzurum region, in the Eastern Van, West Urma region, also the Eastern Urmia region and Velikent. Um, so, sorry, oops. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to go back, but I can't. Anyway, it doesn't matter. 
Um, so, as clear from this map, um, the, the demise of the coral access complex uh, is uh, to be examined uh, by focusing on these different units. And then uh, when the, the general data, I take, all the data are taken into account, we realize that this, uh, the demise of the Coraxis complex actually materializes in different periods of time in the South Caucasus, in the Kangava region and the upper Euphrates basin. They also develop, this demise develops at the different pace in many regions while it extends over several centuries in the Erzurum region and possibly also in the South Caucasus. Sorry, I have a problem and I cannot, oh, there we are. Um, so this is, you know, the, the, the this heterogeneity I have mapped uh, by tentatively dating the beginning of the Kural Axis demise group by group. And this is the kind of map I have reached where in many regions, um, the demise is indeed dated around 2,500, um, as is the case in the Azurum region, the Amuk, or uh, in, of course, the Kuraxis region itself. At, in the Kangawa region, uh, at the site of Godintepe, even though the data is um, a bit questionable, it seemed that the demise of the Kuraxis Occupation there started earlier, around 2,650. Uh, at Kirbet Kirak, it's all at 250. But in the upper Euphrates, uh, it happened much later, at the very end of the third millennium. If we now look at the end of the Kura Axis demise, group by group, again by focusing on radiocarbon dates. And, re the, and relative chronology as indicated by the excavators, then we'll still have a very different picture um, with, you know, uh, in some cases, such as in the Eastern Van, Western um, Omia region, um, it seems that the demise was fairly short and, you know, extended over a short period of time. At Kuditepe in the Kandagawa region, it's extended about, uh, uh, along about 300 uh, years. Uh, whereas in the Erzurum region, uh, this is the most striking, um, um, I would say, example as far as this point is concerned. Uh, the demise lasted uh, along almost 1,000 years with Kuroraxis pottery still attested in the Middle Bronze Age II uh, levels, occupation levels at Sosoyuk, for instance. So how, what do we do with all this, this, this data and how should we interpret demise? I think a good case in point is the upper Euphrates Valley, uh, which as I said, um, you know, um, shows very clear evidence. And in this region, particular region, there's a lot of data and well stratified and well dated data. Um, the case of the upper Euphrates clearly shows that in some regions, the demise of the Kuron axis system started much earlier, that is at the very, very end of the third millennium. Uh, considering the data we have from upper Mesopotamia, we may wonder whether the demise in the upper Euphrates region was induced by climate change, since in coincides with the collapse of upper uh, Mesopotamian societies as um, advocated by uh, Harvey Weiss and his team in a famous paper published in 93, where he says that uh, the collapse um, in the uh, in upper Mesopotamia is such that it probably extended to other areas. And indeed, if we look at the evidence from North Tepe, uh, we have this enormous site um, with Kuroraxis occupations that lasted until the very end um, of the third millennium. It's a major Kuroraxis settlement with both monumental buildings and domestic houses. 
Uh, in particular, the mon monumental buildings uh, started to be built a, a bit before a uh, collapse is perceptible in the um, uh, in the South Caucasus, for instance, that is around 2,600. And uh, uh, three successive uh, occupation periods with uh, extensive uh, settlement and um, an occupation uh, area are illustrated between 2006 and 2100. But uh, as you're probably aware of, Detailed work on Mesopotamia, Mesopotamian data has shown that the 4.2 BP climate change, as it's called, uh, the one that is supposedly responsible for the collapse of upper Mesopotamian societies at the very end of the third millennium, that this climate change was neither rapid nor abrupt. And the fact that the upper Euphrates cooler axis polities, such as Tepejik or Northern Tepe or Kurujutepe or again Aslan Tepe, declined 300 years later than the South Caucasian villages, suggests that the causes for decline are probably linked to other factors. So, in the Caucasus as in Mesopotamia, climate change is probably not the main answer. What happened in the Black Ware cultural zone after the wane of the Kuraxis hegemony? I think we may uh, gather a few answers to our questions by looking at the, at the aftermath of the mice. And this is what I've been trying to do by um, mapping the kinds, uh, the way, um, uh, you know, uh, highland communities developed or evolved after, uh, in, the, in the second half of the third millennium. And I tried to map uh, the way um, this development took, whether it took the shape of some form of continuity, either in the cultural sequences or in the way the settlements were abandoned, um, and uh, or if uh, on the con contrary, um, you know, uh, settlements were abandoned and uh, how they were abandoned and what kind of settlements were abandoned. So I've selected two case studies here to illustrate my points. One of them is well, <laughs> the relationships between Kurax groups and Makopi triality populations and examples I've taken mostly from the work of Antoni, Antoni um, Sagona published in, two in 2000 and also the work of Alizade and Ali at Havaz. So if we look at Sosoyuk, a very interesting case again. It is clear that Triality and Kuraraxis ceramics are found together in Middle Bronze Age one levels in the second half of uh, the fifth millennium. Um, these pots have been found uh, side by side in burials or elsewhere. In fact, until the middle of the second millennium, that is a very, very uh, long period of time. Um, the context is, of course, uh, you know, shows that the, the way people settled and, and, and inhabited Sosoyuk at this period was very different from what happened during the uh, standard Kuroraxis period. Uh, for instance, there are uh, mostly post holes and, uh, and barrels um, attested, no uh, built, uh, no buildings. Uh, uh, this marks a clear change, but uh, the Kural Axis pottery itself is still there. And, you know, this tradition has not disappeared with this change of system. If we now uh, look to another example that has been developed by uh, uh, Michel uh, Miko yesterday, um, the one he, he mentioned um, in his, in one of his, uh, uh, remarks yesterday is the example from Nagala III in Georgia, which is also dated to the Middle Bronze Age, where a cis grave containing Kudaraxis pottery um, apparently was found in the Dromos, leading to a Bedeni Kurgan. So it looks a bit like you had the masters buried with, you know, uh, goodies in the main chamber, 
that is the Bedini Kurgan, with the servants buried in a cistern uh, in the dromos leading to the actual chamber, as if uh, the people buried in the cistern were more or less guarding the main chamber. But people in the cistern and the people that had been buried there um, had been gifted with Kuralaxis pottery. So one wonders whether this situation uh, in fact reflects some kind of subordination ties between the different, these different Middle Bronze Age groups. This is a possibility that we have to um, consider, I think, even if of course the, the data are still preliminary, but uh, according to what Michal says, there are several examples of this kind uh, in Georgia at least. If we uh, now look at Rawat, uh, the situation is quite different. Um, you know, we are faced with a huge settlement that is all, almost 15 hectares. And, um, and this uh, settlement was abandoned at, uh, you know, uh, roughly at the middle of the third millennium in Iran. Uh, this settlement was found by Klaus and Korn in the 70s and the actual plan that uh, uh, they uh, mapped, uh, you know, that you may see here, uh, co more or less corresponds to the, the settlement as it was abandoned uh, in the mid uh, third millennium. So this is quite extraordinary. Uh, uh, by all means, it shows that that settlement after it was abandoned, well, just remained as it were. And this is it, you know, so we are clearly faced with a case of a, a clear break. So clearly the demise of the uh, Kuroraxis complex is a heterogeneous phenomenon. Uh, you know, in places, in regions like the upper Euphrates, the Erzurum region or the Kongava region, we are faced with some kind of continuity in the settlement patterns or the cultural sequences. Whereas in the region, like in, uh, in East Van, Western Urmia region or at Kirbekiag or in the Amuk, where we are faced with abandonment or at least a break in the cultural sequences. So the first conclusion I've reached that there's no trans-regional trans pattern perceptible in the demise of the Kuban Axis complex across the black ware cultural zone. My working hypothesis from <laughs> deriving from this fact is that uh, the different ways and the specific pace at which Kuronaxis societies decline or disappear along the 2500, 100, 500 BC time span, reflect distinct webs of interactions that operate at the regional scale. So I think you know, to, to get more into detail, we have to study the context of demise. And for this, I've chosen two case studies. The first of these is again, the upper Euphrates Valley in Turkey. Because if the demise of Kura Axis polities is not linked to climate change, uh, clearly it correlates with the collapse of upper Mesopotamian societies at the end of the third millennium. So how do we interpret this fact? You know, at Noshun Tebe, at the end of the third millennium, um, we had this huge palatial building that was built on top of the Acropolis. And this concept is clearly alien to the Kura Axis world. But the cultural assemblage, uh, you know, whether it be the pottery or other things, is 90% Kuraxis. I had the possibility to study that material myself in the, light, in the late 90s in the Museum of Ilazim. I think, you know, beside this um, the extraordinary evidence that may be gathered from Noshun Tepe, there are pieces of evidence here and there that clearly show that even at the end of the third millennium, even if we are faced with a Kuronaxis huge settlements in the um, Alta Nova region, um, well, these people were somehow linked also with the South. Uh, for instance, you've got this pop charge from Imamolo Hoyuk in Malatya, which depicts a scene featuring two people drinking from a jar. And this scene shows a remarkable um, similarity with a, a very famous scene that um, is depicted on this time, a Sumerian silent seal that is kept at the British Museum, where you also see two people sitting, drinking from a pot. So clearly, this shows that, you know, these people were somehow connected, 
Also, this is not all that evidence when you look at the material assemblage from Noshun Tepe, for instance. If we sum up the evolution of the upper Euphrates Valley during the third millennium BC, uh, first, uh, we are faced with the coexistence of cooler access group with local uh, Syro-Anatolian communities during the early Bronze Age one. This is very clear at Tepejik, Noshun Tepe or Aslan Tepe. Then there's a progressive disappearance of local groups uh, with the, uh, some kind of hegemony of blackware crafting groups from the EB2 onwards, that is circa 2750. Then there's a decline, this goes together with a decline in Mesopotamian goods, but still about 1% of imported Syrian ware is attested at the very end of the period at Noshun Tepe, for instance. So I think it is clear that although uh, the influence of um, upper Mesopotamia is waning in the upper uh, Euphrates, in the Elaz Melatia region, upper Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia was still somehow integrated into the Mesopotamian sphere of interactions. So we, I think we may say that the ties linking the upper Euphrates with Mesopotamia probably explain the decline of the cooler access polities in the wake of the crisis experienced in the South at the end of the third millennium. This is what has been called by uh, Sharon Stedman, uh, complex connectivity, uh, you know, a concept derived from the work by uh, John Tomlinson, uh, where people in you know, different societies um, disparate societies are somehow linked through uh, ties that are not always very visible. And when part of, uh, you know, chain, uh, part of the chain collapse, this, you know, uh, induces some kind of collapse in the, the other part of the chain. If we look to Gotintepe and the Kangawa region, we are faced with a somehow similar situation um, where we, are, you know, we have a Kuru Araxis related community that has clear Yannick Tepe affinities. This community settles down after a period of interaction with the Yuruk related community of Godin VI. The earliest well preserved occupation level at Godin, that is Godin IV, uh, colon 1b. This earliest level displays a circular village plan with a large regular building to the east. But in the falling and last occupation level, that is got in four, column one, A1, village houses, that is simple village houses, these simple the village houses are replaced by larger buildings suggesting that the villagers have been expelled from the political or should I say sacred center of the mound. And this is exactly what happened at Noshun Tepe between Horizon uh, 8 and Horizon 6, where the so-called palatial building expands uh, at the expense of uh, normal village houses, uh, which progressively uh, are chased out of the Acropolis. So maybe as is the case at um, Noshun Tepe, at Gudin Tepe 4, we are also faced with some kind of evolution towards the central polity. These are the, you know, the two plates I've taken from the work by Mitchell and um, Hilary Gopnik. And that shows, you know, to show you the evolution I'm talking about. Uh, you see this uh, on the left, uh, sorry, uh, right hand side in this plate, the uh, normal uh, village, uh, village houses, um, organized in a circular way around some kind of platform. And this gives way to um, bigger buildings and the, the, the town planning or the village planning is totally different. And uh, again, you know, there are no traces of village houses any longer. Um, so, you know, uh, it's interesting to see that in both cases, there seem to be some kind of a something going on in these societies towards, uh, you know, deep structural changes um, that uh, in one case as at uh, Noshun Tepe ends up in the abandonment of the palace, but at Godin Tepe, um, the uh, Godin IV 
settlement is replaced by something totally different, but in a very progressive way. And, uh, you know, uh, the betterment of good in four is um, marked by the progressive disappearance of Kuror axis related ceramics, but Kuror axis components are nonetheless attested until Godin three, column five. Altogether, the passage from Godin four to Godin three is fairly smooth. And elements of continuity suggest that the population of Godin progressively turned to the south and somehow became part and parcel of the new dynamics prompted by the Proto-Elamite uh, Confederation. And this hypothesis uh, was first um, suggested by Henriksen in a, an article at the end of the 80s. So again, uh, it, it seems that the abandonment of Godin, you know, uh, results from local dynamics that are specific to West Central uh, Iran. It's not something global, you know, it's not something that has affected uh, the Kuro Raxis world as a whole. So my second conclusion is that these examples converge to show that the demise of the Kuro Raxis cultural complex reflects a bundle of distinct underlying regional networks in which one or several cultural historical groups may have been involved um, sorry, oops. <laughs> These networks point to some form of uh, integration uh, with uh, Upper Mesopotamia as concerns the Upper Euphrates Basin. They point to the growth of the Elamite Confederation as concerns Godintepe and the Kongawa region, but possibly also to some kind of power struggle in the Kura and Upper Araxis basins between different communities, you know, so-called um, early Kogan communities, such as the Bedeni, the Matkopi, or the Trialeti uh, communities. And this is at least what is suggested by the very interesting discovery at Nam Namgala 3 in Georgia. <clears throat> and certainly these um, data question the nature, the very nature of the coronal access complex. Since from these, the way it, the demise unfolded over the whole area, uh, the black ware crafting uh, community <laughs> area, uh, the, I would say that the Kura Axis complex mostly appears as an aggregation of social economic units bound by a community of practices such as far rituals or high investment in ceramic crafting or metal mining, and practices that were probably underpinned by a common ideology or some kind of religion. But certainly these socioeconomic units were not necessarily knitted into the same networks. So this would explain that when different, these different networks this collapsed, then these coronaxis socioeconomic units disappeared one after the other, slowly or swiftly depending on the causes that prompted the initial crisis at the regional, regional level. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>